June 1st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Kings chapters 15 and 16 from the Old Testament. In the 18th year of the reign of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, Abijah became king over Judah. He ruled for three years in Jerusalem. His mother was Maacah, the daughter of Abishalom. He followed all the sinful practices of his father before him. He was not wholeheartedly devoted to the Lord his God, as his ancestor David had been. Nevertheless, for David's sake, the Lord his God maintained his dynasty in Jerusalem by giving him a son to succeed him and by protecting Jerusalem. He did this because David had done what he approved and had not disregarded any of his commandments his entire lifetime, except for the incident involving Uriah the Hittite. Rehoboam and Jeroboam were continually at war with each other throughout Abijah's lifetime. The rest of the events of Abijah's reign, including all his accomplishments, are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of the Kings of Judah. Abijah and Jeroboam had been at war with each other. Abijah passed away and was buried in the city of David. His son Asa replaced him as king. In the twentieth year of Jeroboam's reign over Israel, Asa became the king of Judah. He ruled for forty-one years in Jerusalem. His grandmother was Maacah, daughter of Abishalom. Asa did what the Lord approved like his ancestor David had done. He removed the male cultic prostitutes from the land and got rid of all the disgusting idols his ancestors had made. He also removed Maacah, his grandmother, from her position as queen. He also removed Maacah, his grandmother, from her position as queen because she had made a loathsome Asherah pole. Asa cut down her Asherah pole and burnt it in the Kidron Valley. The high places were not eliminated, yet Asa was wholeheartedly devoted to the Lord throughout his lifetime. He brought the holy items that he and his father had made into the Lord's temple, including the silver, gold, and other articles. Now Asa and King Baasha of Israel were continually at war with each other. King Baasha of Israel attacked Judah and established Ramah as a military outpost to prevent anyone from leaving or entering the land of King Asa of Judah. Asa took all the silver and gold that was left in the treasuries of the Lord's temple and of the royal palace and handed it to his servants. He then told them to deliver it to Ben-Hadad, son of Tabrimon, the son of Hezion, king of Syria, ruler in Damascus, along with this message. I want to make a treaty with you like the one our fathers made. See, I have sent you silver and gold as a present. Break your treaty with King Baasha of Israel, so he will retreat from my land. Ben-Hadad accepted King Asa's offer and ordered his army commanders to attack the cities of Israel. They conquered Aijon, Dan, Abel Beth Maacah, and all the territory of Naphtali, including the region of Kinnereth. When Baasha heard the news, he stopped fortifying Ramah and settled down in Tirzah. King Asa ordered all the men of Judah, no exemptions were granted, to carry away the stones and wood that Baasha had used to build Ramah. King Asa used the materials to build up Geba in Benjamin and Mizpah. The rest of the events of Asa's reign, including all his successes and accomplishments, as well as a record of the cities he built, are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of the Kings of Judah. Yet when he was very old, he developed a foot disease. Asa passed away and was buried with his ancestors in the city of his ancestor David. His son Jehoshaphat replaced him as king. In the second year of Asa's rule over Judah, Jeroboam's son Nadab became the king of Israel. He ruled Israel for two years. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. He followed in his father's footsteps and encouraged Israel to sin. Baasha, son of Ahijah, from the tribe of Issachar, conspired against Nadab and assassinated him in Gibeathon, which was in Philistine territory. This happened while Nadab and all the Israelite army was besieging Gibeathon. Baasha killed him in the third year of Asa's reign over Judah and replaced him as king. 
When he became king, he executed Jeroboam's entire family. He wiped out everyone who breathed, just as the Lord had predicted through his servant Ahijah the Shilonite. This happened because of the sins which Jeroboam committed and which he made Israel commit. These sins angered the Lord God of Israel. The rest of the events of Nadab's reign, including all his accomplishments, are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of the Kings of Israel. Asa and King Nadab of Israel were continually at war with each other. In the third year of Asa's reign over Judah, Baasha, son of Ahijah, became king over all Israel in Tirzah. He ruled for 24 years. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. He followed in Jeroboam's footsteps and encouraged Israel to sin. Jehu, son of Hanani, received from the Lord this message, predicting Baasha's downfall. I raised you up from the dust and made you ruler over my people Israel. Yet you have followed in Jeroboam's footsteps and encouraged my people Israel to sin. Their sins have made me angry. So I am ready to burn up Baasha and his family and make your family like the family of Jeroboam, son of Nebat. Dogs will eat the members of Baasha's family who die in the city, and the birds of the sky will eat the ones who die in the country. The rest of the events of Baasha's reign including his accomplishments and successes, are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of the Kings of Israel. Baasha passed away and was buried in Tirzah. His son Elah replaced him as king. The prophet Jehu, son of Hanani, received from the Lord the message predicting the downfall of Baasha and his family because of all the evil Baasha had done in the sight of the Lord. His actions angered the Lord, including the way he had destroyed Jeroboam's dynasty, so that his family ended up like Jeroboam's. In the 26th year of King Asa's reign over Judah, Baasha's son Elah became king over Israel. He ruled in Tirzah for two years. His servant Zimri, a commander of half of his chariot force, conspired against him. While Elah was drinking heavily at the house of Arza, who supervised the palace in Tirzah, Zimri came in and struck him dead. This happened in the 27th year of Asa's reign over Judah. Zimri replaced Elah as king. When he became king and occupied the throne, he killed Baasha's entire family. He did not spare any male belonging to him. He killed his relatives and his friends. Zimri destroyed Baasha's entire family just as the Lord had predicted to Baasha through Jehu the prophet. This happened because of all the sins which Baasha and his son Elah committed and which they made Israel commit. They angered the Lord God of Israel with their worthless idols. The rest of the events of Elah's reign, including all his accomplishments, are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of the Kings of Israel. In the 27th year of Asa's reign over Judah, Zimri became king over Israel. He ruled for seven days in Tirzah. Zimri's revolt took place while the army was deployed in Gibbethon, which was in Philistine territory. While deployed there, the army received this report. Zimri has conspired against the king and assassinated him. So all Israel made Omri, the commander of the army, king over Israel that very day in the camp. Omri and all Israel went up from Gibbethon and besieged Tirzah. When Zimri saw that the city was captured, he went into the fortified area of the royal palace. He set the palace on fire and died in the flames. This happened because of the sins he committed. He did evil in the sight of the Lord and followed in Jeroboam's footsteps and encouraged Israel to continue sinning. The rest of the events of Zimri's reign, including the details of his revolt, are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of the Kings of Israel. At that time, the people of Israel were divided in their loyalties. Half the people supported Timnai, son of Gineth, and wanted to make him king. The other half supported Amri. Amri's supporters were stronger than those who supported Tibni, son of Gainath. Tibni died. Amri became king. 
In the thirty-first year of Asa's reign over Judah, Omri became king over Israel. He ruled for twelve years, six of them in Tirzah. He purchased the hill of Samaria from Shemer for two talents of silver. He launched a construction project there and named the city he built after Shemer, the former owner of the hill of Samaria. Amri did more evil in the sight of the Lord than all who were before him. He followed in the footsteps of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and encouraged Israel to sin. They angered the Lord God of Israel with their worthless idols. The rest of the events of Amri's reign, including his accomplishments and successes, are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of the Kings of Israel. Amri passed away and was buried in Samaria. His son Ahab replaced him as king. In the 38th year of Asa's reign over Judah, Amri's son Ahab became king over Israel. Ahab, son of Amri, ruled over Israel for 22 years in Samaria. Ahab, son of Amri, did more evil in the sight of the Lord than all who were before him, as if following in the sinful footsteps of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, were not bad enough. He married Jezebel, the daughter of King Ethbaal of the Sidonians. Then he worshipped and bowed to Baal. He set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal he had built in Samaria. Ahab also made an Asherah pole. He did more to anger the Lord God of Israel than all the kings of Israel who were before him. During Ahab's reign, Hiel, the Bethelite, rebuilt Jericho. Abiram, his firstborn son, died when he laid the foundation. Segub, his youngest son, died when he erected its gates, just as the Lord had warned through Joshua, son of Nun. God, I, I was just having this conversation with a friend of mine about what, what we leave behind and reading about all these kings. And, you know, we just ran through quite a few people's lives in a, in a short few minutes. And we truly are just this little tiny, tiny dot in this big, huge scheme of things. And what part could we possibly play in your huge, gigantic plan for this world? And I think how intricately detailed all of this is that you have plans for all of this. You have plans for each one of us. Plans to do good, plans to prosper us, plans to give us this amazing life, worshiping and glorifying you. It's kind of incredible to me when I think in the big spectrum of things, how tiny my time is here on earth, but how big all these things are that, that you've asked me to do. Um, it's kind of exciting. But when I was talking to my friend, I said, he was talking something about funerals and we were having some morbid conversation and I said I I would prefer if if nobody ever remembered me and he's like oh Janelle that's just that's just silly <laughs> I don't even know why you'd say something like that and I said I only want people to remember God in the things that I did I I don't want them to remember my name if my name is forgotten I don't want to be in the annals of people who lived here in the northwest in the 2000s <laughs> I want what I do for you, God, to be remembered. I want people to pay attention to my life, not because I did anything spectacular, but because you did some amazing, spectacular things in my life. I want my goal of reflection of you to always be that, that it is you working in my life. I I'm lucky I make it through another day. But with you, I know I can do so many things that this little tiny blip on this huge, gigantic timeline that you have becomes important, not because it's me, but because it's you doing whatever you need to do with my life. And to me, that gets really exciting. So even though I know I'm here for a very short, short amount of time, shorter than I even realize, God, you are so big and so gracious at what you're doing in my life to help your kingdom. And I just ask, please, that I be an obedient servant and allow you to continue to work in my life. 
God, I ask you to continue to work in everyone's lives who's listening right now. That they will every morning wake up and put down at your feet everything they need to so that they can just do crazy awesome things for you throughout the day. God, all I want to do is do big things for your kingdom. And I want it to be all about you. And even if at one point the accomplishments of my life are listed in a big, huge long list like this, and hopefully I'm not a bad king, but I kind of did good stuff for you. No matter what, I want it to point back to you. I want everything I do to glorify you. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Thank you.